if you like betting on golf, but everyone that your back misses the cut, get some experts involved, with all the stats and the tips and so much more, cause it's the golf betting system, the golf betting system, it's the golf betting system. Greetings and welcome to the Golf Betting System Podcast 176. This is our 2021 3M Open and Kazoo Open Tips and Selections Podcast. Paul Williams and Barry O'Hanrahan join me, Steve Bamford, to discuss this week's PGA and European Tour Golf Action. Good morning, gents. Morning, guys. Morning, guys. This podcast is for listeners of 18 and above. Please be gamble aware. You can visit begambleaware.org for more info and, of course, please bet responsibly. Visit our world-famous golf betting system website with our in-depth betting previews, masses of tournament statistics, including strokes gained now on the PGA Tour, and our predictor models, all available completely free of charge with no paywall. Please subscribe to this podcast and drive the popularity of the show. We're available on social media, on Twitter. Paul is at Golf Betting. I am at Bamford Golf. Barry is at A Good Talk Golf. You can join our Golf Betting System Facebook group. The link is available in the description box. Plus, look out for the Sea Bamford Golf YouTube channel where I present the Golf Betting Show every week. Please subscribe subscribe, and like the shows. Now, you guys as listeners power this podcast. It's worth noting at this point, uh, gentlemen, that due to our fantastic listeners, we actually got to a peak of number two golf podcast in the UK last week. With our open championship coverage, fantastic! I saw it number three, so it peaked at number two. Then that's that's yeah, really we good. squeaked up another place, nearly so top of the number pops, two in the UK. Almost got number one, and I believe we were we were top twenty five in the US as well. So you know, just thank you to all of uh, all of our listeners. It's uh, it's you guys that are effectively driving the popularity of the podcast. So it's really good stuff. What do we need to do, now, Steve? Do we just strike the ball a bit better to like to be jump from the Louis used thousand of podcasts up to like getting being the major winner and getting the first place? I think to get first, <laughs> a few place, more winners. You just, a, you just have to put a podcast out every day, <laughs> and we, we could we could talk about the weather, the weeds, <laughs> and just talk about anything, and you probably get to number one. Jeez, we didn't get the the weather. They didn't get the weather right last week at all. That really did. That really kind of did a number on our approach to the the bets for the week thinking it was going to be quite windy and a bit of a test and like we had a bit on thursday and it was decent wind on thursday but really started laying down from friday onwards and just not what we thought was going to happen (sighs) dead calm by sunday yeah yeah no um the the youth wrote youth rose to the top are you two just breaking into my intro here (laughs) yeah you get to us (laughs) Right, I'll actually read out a review on this basis. So, don't forget, listeners, five-star reviews. Um, We'd love some more. So, if you're in the United States, Ireland, UK, Canada, wherever you listen, Australia, please send us a five-star review. I'll read it out at the start of next week's show, or next the next show, I must say. There isn't going to be one next week. Leave your name and where you are in the review. Title of this one is Great Podcast, Five Stars. It is from TN Volves 615 in the United States. Thank you for that, TN. Great resource for Euro golf knowledge. Ahead of the Scottish Open and the Open. So clearly, TN was listening to this podcast for some insight into, uh, into both of those big tournaments over the last couple of weeks. But yeah, let's, let's move on to next week or last week. The forecast. That's the thing, isn't it? These forecasts, especially by the coast, we've always said it. It's such a such they're such micro climates. You don't really know, do you? So you set you set your team up for like extreme wind conditions. You know, you're throwing the likes of Paddy Harrington in there, <laughs> who uh, comes to the fore when it's blowing 25 miles an hour every day. And next thing you know, the wind's laying down, and uh, it's more than scorable. So yeah, that's the kind of that's the kind of open grind, isn't it? The mad thing was every resource we were checking, like multiple different models, were all showing the same. 
going to be windy for the first three days, like proper winds, and it just it, yeah. it just never materialized. So anyway, the official the official recordings for the weather from the Royal and Ancient. I'll read them out to you actually, because I record all of this rubbish, as um, as listeners will know. Thursday, it reached uh, north northeast, twelve to sixteen miles an hour, with gusts to twenty six. So um, I, I I took that data for for our wind um, put, uh, predictor variable, and on Friday, uh, ten to twelve from the northeast, same direction, with gusts to twenty two. Then on Saturday, that died to gust of eighteen, and by Sunday, it was just three to six miles an hour. So yeah, yeah, and all they could do was try to uh, try to manipulate the pin positions to try and make it a bit more of a challenge. But fifteen under still, that still broke uh, broke the record at the track, didn't it? From from all of the opens that have been held there over the years, and uh, it could have been deeper if Louis had have, uh, pulled his finger out over the weekend and uh, and stopped hitting everything twenty yards right with his irons, and uh, he could he could have got to twenties, I think. In this day and age of looking after players, do you think we'll ever see a golf course like we saw at Muirfield in 2013, was it? The one where um, Mickelson won. You know, that that baked crazy firm and fast. I mean, Carnoustie, when Molinari won, was ripping, was pretty fast. Um, Not completely, but I think the the RNA, they just, they're, they tread a really slightly safe line, but it's just wise as well because it never seems to completely get away from them. But they've always got that kind of buffer built in that if the wind had, you know, stayed up, that course would have dried out a bit more. And I think they were they're just cautious because if you let that go uh, too far, it just goes it just goes nuts. If that got baked firm fast and the wind was up a few more miles an hour, um, it would have been a nightmare. It would have changed things so dramatically, not just by like a half a shot or a shot. So, it, look, I think we all thought, we didn't think the scoring would get that deep, but yeah, so be it. It got there, and I don't think anybody particularly minds if the scoring gets deep at the Open Championship. It's just it is what it is. The course plays the way it's set up, and um, it certainly served well to separate to show who was playing the best golf that last week. And in that respect, it's a complete success. The guys who were playing the best ended up at the top of the leaderboard and the guys who weren't playing great just didn't have a chance. And that's that's kind of all you really want from a golf tournament. So um, it's just, yeah, I suppose from an entertainment perspective, a little bit disappointing that there wasn't more drama on Sunday. Uh, Marikawa was just absolutely phenomenal. You just couldn't see him. Even when he made mistakes, it was just up and down, grand, done, on to the next hole. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. His, his short game, when he needed to call on it, was 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 outstanding and uh, bogey free to to clinch his second major championship was super impressive. Both of them on debut as well, which uh, he, he's he's breaking records, isn't he? You know, he's hmm. he's going to continue to uh, to accumulate uh, titles. He's going to continue to accumulate majors if he plays the way he's playing. And uh, if you're coupling that incredible long game with a short game that's improving. Um, a putter which can be compliant. I mean, I don't know how many people would have watched his performance or looked in depth at his performance at the Scottish Open because he was way down the field. Um, his putting, he's bottom for putting. His wasn't putting it? was base. abysmal. It was awful. But he's got he's got previous in this. He's got previous where he's putted awfully, worked it out in a couple of days, and gone and won the next week. And um, it's exactly what he did. And. The, the, there was nothing wrong with his putting over over the weekend in particular. He was he looked really strong, but as I say, you cu- he coupled that with the approach play and uh, the, the performance that he puts together from tee to green, and it's you know he, he's a force, a serious force to be reckoned with over the the years to come. You you say he's got previous. You listen to some of these numbers. So we'll go back to Memorial Tournament, July last year, twenty twenty. He was fourth for tee to green. 74th for putting. He lost nine, eight and a half strokes on the greens at that tournament at Memorial. Mm. Finished 48. Then within two tournaments, he was winning the PGA Championship, where he was actually ranked first for putting that week. (laughs) 
Yeah, it's just mad, right? And you, you, you say again about previous. I remember this. Genesis Invitational, fifth for tee to green at Tigers tournament. He was sixty seventh for putting. He lost seven and a half strokes on the green. Right. Next, the following week, the WGC first for tee to green, tenth for putting wins. And that, we were talking about this off off mic. I haven't seen a guy that's so consistent from tee to green in all of the years that I've been doing this, apart potentially from Tiger Woods. But by the time we started this in 09, yeah, we saw Woods in his peak. And strokes gain date wasn't available then. But listen to this. This is from the Heritage this year, Harbour Town. Second for tee to green, fourth for tee to green, fifth, fourth, fourth. He had a blip at the Scottish Open. He was only 22nd for tee to green. Oh, that's terrible. But like you said, he lost 7.1 strokes on the greens at the Scottish Open for 71st place. And then, of course, he goes to the British Open, which he's never played before, never really played Lynx golf before, and wins. Check, check. This, this guy, this, this guy's a crazy talent. I, I, I think we're seeing... I mean, I've even seen some kind of comparisons with Tiger Woods' early doors in his career. That's the kind of progress, that's the kind of road or route map that this Morikawa guy's on. Uh. And it isn't all Bryson DeChambeau power off the tee, is it? It's it's just consistency. Now, he's, he's a kind of, uh, we've said this before, he's a kind of Henrik Stenson of the modern era, but with an extra 10 yards of pop off the tee. And, you know, with a mental strength that's just unbelievable. Yeah, just yeah. like this, just nailing a tee to played, green. He's only played 56 events. The 2016 Air Capital Classic on the Corn Ferry Tour was his first um, outing as a in a professional tournament. I doubt if he was a pro, he was probably an am at that point. He finished second. Yeah, and within one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, in his ninth um, start, he was then a professional. He won the Barracuda Championship in 2019. So within 56 events, he's won five titles, including two majors. What was I read? He's got more. He's more wins now than missed cuts. <laughs> like, I, I, well, that's the other thing. I mean, I'm seeing you know clearly five wins, and there's just a whole host. How many times have we we have we said over the last couple of two years, eighteen months? Oh. Morikawa got in a playoff, but you know, it, 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 this could be quite easily seven, eight wins mm. with the opportunities that he's missed. I mean, I can remember the one at Colonial, what, the tournament where they came back after COVID. He lost that, didn't he? Really, he should have won it. Yep. Oh, there's been a few. There's, there's, there's quite a few tournaments where he's had real chances. But he's putting so himself five in this. Could easily be seven or eight. Yeah, he's putting himself in the position, and he's going to continue to put himself in the position to win tournaments if he plays the way that he's playing. And it doesn't seem to bother him that he has these off weeks and they're seriously off weeks with a putter because he mm. finds a solution to it very, very quickly and uh, and comes out and puts that to, puts it to bed a week or two later. When you're seeing Morikara at 25 to 1, 30 to 1, 33 to 1, not that I think he, we're going to see these prices for a period of time, if not again, um, it's almost an auto bet, isn't it? Because if you see if you see that the tee to green game is on, like it is pretty much every week, it's just a case of whether he putts well. Uh, partic- it sounds like particularly if he has a week where he's the worst in the field of putting, you know the bounce back's coming by, by the by the mm-hmm. trends uh, that we you were reading sure. out. It's it's amazing sure. little things like he changed a few of the irons from the Scottish Open. You know he, he said he wasn't quite middling them as Caddy was saying the sound wasn't the same as usual. So he changed a few of the irons and. I think I heard that for the pudding, you know, I think the caddy or his coach suggested he just get a bit more weight on his left side and all of a sudden he's holding everything. And it looked, I mean, those things were rolling into the center of the hole uh, at like Jordan Speed pace. You know that, you know that pace where you just see it just running down the drain pipe. It was, um, it's amazing to watch. Like devastating when you've got other, when you've got people chasing him, um, you've backed them, you know, it's Speed backed, but you just, you just, didn't see any openings, real openings there, where you're like, "Oh, there's a good chance of this uh, of speed getting it here." It just it, it just felt like a procession. Mm. It was. 
That's exactly what it was, Barry. And a very impressive one, too. Mm. If you look at Morikawa's winning score, he was nine under uh, during that that windy period, uh, Thursday, Friday. So nine under and then six under, 68-66 across Saturday, Sunday. Spieth was 65-67, so eight under. He then he then gained another five shots over the weekend to get to that thirteen under total. Louis, of course, sixty four sixty five, so he was at nine under par going into. Uh, would it have been nine sixty four? No, 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 eleven under. He was. No, it was eleven, wasn't it? Yeah, he was eleven under and just stayed there effectively over the weekend. Tready water. Anyway, well done, Paul. You you learned from Barry and my mistake with Tony Fina at the U.S. Open. You put. You put Louis in there as your each way kind of guarantee stacker bet. Mm-hmm. I know that ultimately you're disappointed that he didn't win, but did did we just read that I, there was a tweet that was out there this morning? Three point one million dollars he's he's made in the majors this year, Louis Oosthuizen. Yeah. But I'm I'm sure he'd have throw all that away if he could have actually, you know, got the job done in one of them. Yeah, yeah. second, second, third. Would you prefer to miscut, miscut? Win, probably. Mm, absolutely. Probably. Mm. Oh, you feel so bad for him, you know, just because he puts himself in these positions and he's uh, it's just so close but so far away. Yeah, yeah, but um, you, you imagine you'd like to think you'd learn from it and whatever the technical issue was over the weekend that was pushing a lot of his irons right he'll quickly sort it out whether he sorts it out in time for this week at the 3M because he's he's there and he's a short price so what second or third favourite um, we shall see um, but um, I suspect he'll be back and I suspect um, he'll win something later in the year which which will probably be in South Africa and uh, it'll, it'll uh, probably, three to one <laughs> it'll, it'll probably walk the uh, Alfred Dunhill Championship or the uh, South African Open or something but, um, He'll beat Yako Hullers by five shots <laughs> yeah. and bring home the five to do bacon for his uh, annual South African victory. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm, okay. I was just looking, though, at the, at the leaderboard. Didn't appear to be many. I mean, there was Dylan Fritelli in fifth. Great performance from Dylan. And Mackenzie Hughes with his magic beans in sixth. Mm. Um, everyone else, though, it's, they were relatively short prices at the top of the le- at the mm. top of the leaderboard this year. You know, Scheffler would have been a good price. McIntyre, DJ Berger, they were all. You know, there was no one triple digits apart from Hughes and Fratelli. Yeah, yeah, and you'd, you'd have done well to pick Fratelli out on the back of what three straight missed cuts, I think, prior to that. Um, Hughes, I saw a few people on Hughes, which yeah, was Hughes. a nice pick. Um, if you if you managed to pluck yeah. him out, but yeah, he was the only real. You know, mega long shot in there that uh, that managed to make the frame and reward the each way backers at the extended places. Very disappointing with all the extended places, isn't it? That the, there weren't a couple more in there. Just uh, for anyway, the um, we blame the weather for that one, lads. Yeah, you could have got a few if more. Doubt, free- blame the weather. Yeah, exactly. There we go. We did nothing wrong. <laughs> Completely blameless. <laughs> now this podcast is the official. Well, it's not official at all, but it's the official Seamus Power podcast. So it would be completely remiss of us. Oh, by the way, Paul, well done with your Brooks Kepka tip as well. So effectively, you had Kepka and Oosthausen in the each way money, which at any major is is um, you know pretty much as all you can do. Uh, so well done, mate, for last week. Um, you scored Seamus Power, Barry, didn't you? So what price did you get in the end with all of your save Paddy Power boosts that you'd you'd pop to one side? Uh, I only it was sixteen to one. I had to just sixteen to one. You got yeah. I had to just. Uh, I'm not saying suck it up, but like it was what I said. You know, I'm sticking with them and not getting price proud or losing the faith. Everything about him was saying he should have had a great chance to win. And look, a lot, a lot of things went his way in terms of JT Poston being like unbelievably unlucky to be an inch or two outside, you know, out of bounds. Um, that got him in a bit of a spin cycle, and then he left the his thirty five footer short on sixteen, I think it was par three, sixteen or seventeen, and he three, you know, three put at that, and 
you know, like little Seamus chipping in on the first playoff hole. Just you, you need a bit of luck for a win to happen. And you felt that maybe Seamus been, you know, maybe he's been saving up the luck over the last few weeks by hitting like T8 and T9. And, you know, it all just kind of came together in one great week. Um, he was brilliant in the playoff. You know, I think he hit one shot that he'd classify as poor, which is a tee shot on 18. But then he played a magnificent approach from very funky stance. And outside of that, yeah, it was just, uh, it's great to see, you know. Delighted. To, I mean, it's great to be on it for the bet, but like just, look, it, was a, it was a really cool thing to see an Irishman winning the PGA Tour after, um, you know, grinding, grinding Monday qualifiers and, just getting all the way there. It's, uh, it was a cool win. And I want to say thanks to everybody who reached out on Twitter as well. It's loads of uh, messages. So yeah, it was kind of a cool cool buzz. And Twitter was a very busy place for Seamus Power Love this uh, yesterday. It was great. We are we are the Seamus Power number one podcast. That's that's clearly <laughs> the fact of the matter, isn't it? I mean, Officially unofficial. We are Seamus's <laughs> biggest fans. What kind of coverage does that get then? Or did it get on Monday? That Seamus's win over in over in Ireland. Oh yeah, what kind of media coverage did that that's get? Hit, that's hit the yeah, it's hit the national media. It's a big, it's a big yes. deal. It really yes. is. Um, just huge, huge, huge um, positivity and love throughout. Like just, I suppose the golf sphere um, in particular on Twitter. Like you just see the um, the impact that has right throughout golf in Ireland. It's a it's a brilliant thing, um, and. Look, it's be, it'll be really interesting to see how he goes from now on, that he's got that freedom. Um, we were saying yesterday, just having a chat, Steve, it'll be, you know, he clearly knows how to get it done when the pressure is like at its max, like a bit of a Monday Q beast, just getting into tournaments. He's been playing yeah. probably some of the best golf on the planet for the last, what, six, seven tournaments. Really is playing phenomenal yeah, stuff. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, it'll can't argue with that. just be interesting to see how the transition now from the pressure to get the card, um, if the release of that, now that he has the card locked in, it will help him go, you know, jump another level. Um, be fascinating to watch. I mean, super talented guy. And uh, yeah, let's hope we see another <laughs> win soon. Don't forget, we're, you know, recency bias and all that. It was only the Rocket Mortgage Classic, was it three weeks ago, where he had to rely on Charlie Hoffman withdrawing to mm. get a spot in the field? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's gone from 200th in the FedEx Cup, like, you know, probably a, a low percent chance to keep his card for next year. Goes on a hot sure. streak. You know, even if he didn't win yesterday, he probably he would have done enough finishing second or third to probably lock in his card for next year. But then you're you're kind of in that like oh I've only got one year now now he gets the he's the two year was a two year exemption you know into his first major at the PGA next year Players Championship Tournament of Champions you know Kapalua yeah Cap, you know he's got a decent chance he's 69th now in the FedEx Cup so a good week in the first week of the playoffs he's got a chance of getting mm-hmm. into the second event in the playoffs so it is it's an amazing trajectory from like way outside the, you know, keeping his card for next year to like, oh, he could go have a good run in the playoffs and who knows. Yeah, no, impressive stuff. And uh, yeah, it's it's been interesting to watch his, watch his progression. And as you say, he'd been knocking on the door for weeks on end really, hadn't he, with these kind of eighth place positions and uh, eventually keep knocking the door loud enough is, uh, is, it's potentially going to open, and uh, when I went to bed, I didn't watch it at the end of it. When I went to bed, I, it looked to me as if Poston had uh, got it wrapped yeah, up. Yeah, it and, looked uh, under control, and then he's then he's got he went OV, didn't he? Yeah. Like Barry said, yeah, yeah. So I'd, when I checked my phone first thing Monday morning, and it told me that Seamus had won, it was uh, it was a bit of a surprise. But no, well done, Barry, and well done for your perseverance with that bet because uh, sometimes that pays off, and uh, it clearly did. So well done. Just on the FedEx Cup side of things, there's some fairly big names, you know, with with issues at the moment. I mean, we'll start. Ches Reeve is at one one nine. He won the Travellers a couple of years ago, so I would have thought that exemption's probably coming to the end this year. Adam Hadwin at one twenty. Don't forget one twenty five full status for next season. Yeah, we've got Ricky Fowler at one twenty four. Wow. Now Fowler, I, I'm guessing Fowler's got some kind of 
He'll have, he'll have some kind of career earnings exemption from that, or they'll manufacture something, I'm sure. Yeah, it's a bit, a um, bit early in his career, though, to be leaning on those um, hidden exemptions, yeah. let's say, or the, the not straightforward ones. He's playing well, though. Uh, he is play, he's playing reasonably well at the moment. It says on my database he's got another year's left exemption, so okay. I think Fowler's safe. I think Fowler's safe. He's just playing effectively to get in the playoff safe face, effectively. Mm. Uh, Gary Woodland at 127. He'll have that US Open exemption. Yeah. Tommy Fleetwood's at 128. Now, Fleetwood's never won in the, in the, in the, the United States, but you know, top 50 in the world. Justin Rose at 129. It's just craziness, this is. Uh, what we else? Francesco Molinari at 134. So these players are in serious danger of not making the FedEx Cup playoffs at the very least. So Tommy... You've got Tom- Ryan, Moore, Ryan Moore is fighting for his card. Ryan Moore, 137. John Deere Classic finished second a couple of weeks ago, didn't he? Mm. He then said that um, he had a family vacation booked. He didn't want to come over to the UK. 10-hour flight. It was going to be cold and windy. He might play up with his back. So he decided to stay in the. No, it's true. I just read. I read it. This. I read he, it he must have read the same weather forecast as we did. Yeah, <laughs> and so he stayed. He stayed in the US. Went on vacation. I. You would assume that Moore was going to go hell for leather this week at the 3M Open. Um, he's going to be playing this week, next week, the Barracuda. But you know, he's what's that? What's that? He's twelve places outside the 125 at the moment. Ryan Moore, Eric Van Royen at 139. Scott Piercy at 140. Cameron Champ at 142. That's some big, big names. All. Danny Willett at 151. Tom Lewis, 155. You know. Oh, and of course, Benny Ann. Benny Ann at 165. Jason Duffner, 167. Yeah. So that you know, all of that. There's some big names there. It all puts what Seamus Power's done over the last month into even more focus for me. It's a fantastic effort from Seamus. So congratulations to him, and it'll be uh, great to see him with his two-year exemption playing some of the bigger events like next year or next season. Right, should we talk about this week? The action that we've got with us. You've got the Kazoo Open pool, but I was going to start with the 3M Open on the PGA Tour this week. Yep. <laughs> it isn't the best of fields, it has to be said. <laughs> I suppose, what, uh, what do you expect, really? Um, what have we got? We've got the Olympics next week. We've then got a WGC the week after. So, you know, we had the Open Championship last week, Scottish Open, Irish Open. Uh, you know, it's been a lot of golf. Um, it, of course, the field is very much based... <laughs> Saying that, I'm not exactly seeing Tommy Fleetwood. He, he, he's going to the Olympics. It's difficult, isn't it? You know, it's it's a it's a year where people are getting spread very very thinly. And um, if you haven't been playing good golf, you're struggling to you're struggling with the basics. A lot of players are clearly. We've got Dustin Johnson in the field at fifteen to two. Louis Oosthuizen at fourteen to one with Tony Finau. I always love Tony when he's a fourteen to one shot. How about you, Barry? Hmm. Especially on a golf course where fifteen of the holes feature water features, <laughs> it sounds Tony. It sounds Tony Finau esque, doesn't it? Not. Patrick Reed is his ubiquitous eighteen to one in kind of rubbish field event, and then you've got Cameron Tringali of all people, twenty eight to one. Matthew Wolf, who won here in 2019 at 33 to 1. Bobby McIntyre at 33 to 1. Sergio Garcia at 33 to 1. I think people will be backing Sergio this week. He has a good habit of doing well week after majors. And then Bubba Watson at 40 to 1 with Emiliano Grio, the win monster, Grio, and Keegan Bradley at 40 to 1 with Cam Davis. Now, when I worked it through yesterday, um, we've got DJ in world number two. We've then got uh, Oosthausen, Reed, and Finau, who are all in the top 20. Then is, there's a huge drop to world number 38, Matthew Wolf. And then after Wolf, Brian Harmon's withdrawn. You've then got Stuart Sink, Robert McIntyre, and Lucas Herbert in the world's top 50. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight of the world's top 50 in this 3M open field. It's not got the best depth, it has to be said. No, and you, you can understand that, can't you, as you say, with the, the golf that's been played over the last few few weeks and months with the major seasons so uh, kind of it's in such a short space of time nowadays. Um, mm. These boys need to take their foot off the pedal for a little bit. TPC Twin Cities, Blaine, Minnesota. We've seen this tournament 2019 and 2020. 2019 was Matthew Wolf winning with that extraordinary putt on the last. Um, I was on Bryson DeChambeau, you won't be surprised to hear, so he got done by Wolf. Wolf was 175 to 1. I believe it was only his third or fourth PGA Tour event. Uh, yeah, 175 to 1 winner. He won that uh, by a shot from Bryson DeChambeau and Colin Morikawa. It's amazing how these things kind of work through. Um, and then last year, everyone's thinking, oh, well, if Matthew Wolf, Bryson DeChambeau were, you know, in, in the top two last year, this is a Bombers golf course. So everyone's lumping on the Bombers, including me. And um, of all people, we had Michael Thompson winning from Adam Long, two of the shortest players on the PJ Tour you'll probably struggle to find. So you went from a year of Bombers and outrageous power, including Wyndham Clark. I remember Wyndham Clark in that. He was right in the mix until he realised where he was on Sunday and fell back. But And then you've got to a situation where Michael Thompson won. And just looking at their winning stats, I mean, I'll take you through. It's an Arnold Palmer design. Do you know what Arnold Palmer's also designed? Uh, Bay Hill chaps. Although I've had it on Twitter this morning that actually, Steve, you, you're quoting this wrong. It was Dick Wilson that that built Bay Hill, and he's he, the guy is correct. But um, I'd have thought Arnold Palmer had quite a lot of design into it once he but once he purchased the land in 1970, Bay Hill. But anyway, we're kind of splitting hairs here. It's a par 71. Is 7,431 yards in length. As I said, number of holes with water in play, 15. Doesn't really sound like Tony Fina. Bent grass greens, pure. It used to host the Champions Tour as well. Kenny Perry won around here three times. So I'm kind of I use that Kenny Perry just as a kind of view into what kind of courses you want to be looking for format on the PGA Tour because PGA Kenny Perry had a very you said this to me yesterday it's been a long while since we talked to, we talked about Kenny Perry on this podcast it, it if ever it doesn't it doesn't get many mentions on your previews or the pods he doesn't does he but but just going back for reference Kenny Perry won at Phoenix TPC Scottsdale. He's a winner at Bay Hill. He's a two-time winner at Colonial. He's also a two-time winner at Jack's Tournament at Muirfield Village. He also won the John Deere Classic. So I, I do use those tournaments as reference, especially when you've got Bryson DeChambeau, who won his first tournament at the John Deere Classic. He's also a Memorial Tournament winner, as we know. He won that. Um, there's definitely crossover. And, of course, we also saw Bryson DeChambeau win at Bay Hill, didn't we, this year? So there is some crossover. I mean, DeChambeau didn't win, I get that, but he, he lost by a shot to Matthew Wolf. The difficulty is, you look at Matthew Wolf, where Wolf hasn't really, in domestic PGA tour, tours, he hasn't tour events, he hasn't really done a great deal, apart from he finished second at the Rocket Mortgage Classic in Detroit, and there is definite crossover with that because Bryson DeChambeau won that event. Um, and we've also got a situation where Matthew Wolf was second in Las Vegas last year. He lost in the playoff to Martin Laird. So there's some crossover potentially with Shriners because we know DeChambeau's got a fantastic record at that event. Um, it was interesting as well, uh, Michael Thompson. If you if you want to know where Michael Thompson's done well, um in terms of courses where he's performed well on the PGA Tour. He was a winner at PGA National. And I, I read a lot of content and a lot of um, feedback from players saying they do get that this is a... It looks visually like a Florida golf course because there is so much water in play. 
that that that's quite a common comment about this place at uh, TPC. Um, in terms of that, the, the the just the format of it. But you look at you look at Thompson. He's had a tenth at Colonial. It's typical, isn't it? That's why he was a hundred and twenty-five to one when he won this. But you just kind of just scrape some of the dust away. You can see that he performed well on a lot of these tracks. He won at River Highlands, um, which is the Travellers Championship. He was fourth there, rather, and also eighth and fourteenth at Muirfield Village. So Jack's tournament. So there's some cross there's some definitely correlating crossover events that I kind of tried to tap into this week. It's pretty nondescript, though. It's your typical TPC network golf course. The, at the end of the day, these courses are there so that, you know, amateurs and well-to-do businessmen in the area can go down here and have a round of golf and say, oh, I played on the same course as Bryson DeChambeau or Dustin Johnson. So it isn't, they're not the most strenuous of courses. Um, and effectively, they play as difficult as the conditions I must say, you're going to love this, Barry. This part of um, this part of the world has had very little rain, very little rain. Minnesota, um, but I think what will happen is, especially when we we could be getting temperatures into the late 30 degrees centigrade. So for me, it's going to be one of these golf courses that's firm and running on the fairways. And they are going to get the hoses out each and every day on the greens. So I, I think with no wind in the forecast or very little, it's going to be like a, another 20 under job. Well, Minnesota Fire Department activated. They're out there now, mate. They, they, they've probably got 50 engines out there. they got they got three or four engines per green, just making sure they're as uh, <laughs> soft as they can get them. Do we, or, and they'll be saying, "Don't or what we don't want you to do. Don't walk the fairways, boys. We want those as fur. We want we want the ball running three seventy on the fairways, <laughs> and then they can just come in with their little lob wedges to two feet eagle. Get them spinning right by the hole. So I, yes, it's just going to be a scoring fest. Effectively, there's no, there's nothing in the forecast to suggest it wouldn't be. But I do, I do, I do think I, you know I'm sure. I don't think the fairway, I think the fairways, I wouldn't be surprised if you're seeing on the approach shots and off the tee, you're seeing pretty dry conditions, yeah, in terms of the turf. But there's no, I mean, it could be getting up to 36, 37 degrees centigrade. And they they have to be watering these greens. So, you know, it's going to be target golf effectively. And that's kind of where I got to. Um, Lead score progression, 2020, um, the first round leader shot eight under. In 2019, the, the first round leader shot nine under. So that's what we're dealing with. You know, this this course is very, very, very gettable. Um, Paul is pulling together some very useful strokes gain metrics that are all available, completely free of charge at Golf Betting System. They're available off the homepage. I'll just take you through the top 10 in this field, strokes gained total. Uh, we've only had two renewals, so we'll take it all with a pinch of salt. But the top 10 strokes gain total in this field. Uh, Tringali at 10, Doug Gim at 9, Tony Finau at 8, Charles Howe the third at 7, Bo Hogue at 6, Robbie Shelton of all people at 5, Emiliano Grillo at 4. I can I can see a tied ninth for Grillo this uh, this week. I can I can see that a mile off. Charles Svart, so we'll probably get into the lead and then start shooting 73s and 74s across the weekend. Uh, Charles Svartzel, three. Adam Hadwin, two. And Matthew Wolfe, won't be surprised to hear. Number one, strokes gained total around here. Uh, but yes, we're only talking about four, eight rounds in that data. But that's something that we uh, put out now every week at Golf Betting System. It's all very useful. We split it all down, of course, by approach off the tee and all the kind of data that you want to be seeing. What that does say, though, you, I mean, the whole thing says, um, this, you, know, you can win, away, win around here in various ways, can't you? I mean, that's, that's blatantly obvious. Kenny Perry is a fantastic ball striker and a streaky putter on bent grass. So you can see why he's won around here three times on the Champions Tour. Matthew Wolfe won this. It was bombs away. Um, he was fourth for strokes gained on approach. He was only... Um, sorry, he was second for strokes gained on approach. 
he was 39th for strokes gained putting. So he won it purely tee to green. Putter was just about neutral. Michael Thompson, typical putter, fourth for approach, 17th tee to green, and he was first for strokes gained putting. So it's as long as it's short. Putters can win, bombers can win. It's just basically a resort golf course. Simple as that, really. Right, I will take you through my fancies. I have gone for world number two, Dustin Johnson, at the top. I just think it's one of those weeks. With Dustin, he hasn't won since the Masters last year, and that must be starting to weigh on his mind. I don't care, you know, Dustin doesn't. A a player of his ilk will want to be winning, and he'll be wanting to win soon. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he wins this, because... He's clearly got a game that's starting to peak. He was eighth last week at the Open, played very nicely. Thank you, uh, Open, for not producing any strokes gain data for uh, us golf punters. That's a that's a nice touch from the Open. Um, but yeah, I, in this field with such a lack of quality, I, I don't foresee Louis Oosthuizen to do a great deal this week for kind of obvious reasons, i.e. he only plays well in the majors or when he's at South Africa. Um, I would have thought he's exhausted. Um I wouldn't have been surprised to see him WD, but it looks like he's going to play. Tony Finau at 14 to 1. I'll let someone else back that. Patrick Reed at 18s, no interest in that. And then we're down to Cameron Tringali as the fifth favourite for this event. If there's anyone going to just turn up and blast this and just take the win, it's Dustin Johnson. And actually, you look at this event, this is the same part of the schedule where the RBC Canadian Open used to be. And going back there, 2013, Branch Snedeker won that at 14 to 1. He'd been 11th at the Open the week before. 2015, Jason Day won, 9 to 1 favourite. He'd finished fourth at St Andrews, one shot out of that playoff with Zach Johnson, Leishman, and Louis. And then 2018, Dustin Johnson himself, he won the RBC Canadian Open. Getting off a flight from the UK, he was the 7 to 1 favourite. So there you go, 7 to 1, 9 to 1, and 14 to 1 winners of the RBC Canadian Open across 13, 15, and 18. So it does happen a fair chunk. You know, a quality player that wants to take the victory gets the job done. Yeah, yeah, a little warm up at the Open and then pops along and banks, banks a million dollars and uh, another, another title for the, the collection. He's won 12 PGA Tour and two European Tour titles since the start of 2017. He's won 24 PGA Tour titles. He hasn't won since last November, and I'm taking him at 15-2. to two. Four points to win with Unibet. I, I just think that's a straightforward, simple bet, really. I'd be surprised if he did what he did last year around here. He, didn't he shoot a 78 and withdrew? But it was a different time of the year, blah, 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 blah. I think he's actually turning up here quite hungry to win. And he has won these kind of events in the past. He isn't he isn't a Xander or a a, a Louis that po- focuses only on majors. He he wins, you know, 2018 FedEx St. Jude Classic. That's before it was a WGC. He won the Canadian Open, as we said, in 2018. He won the 2020 Travellers. He does win domestic events on the PGA Tour. He's not He's not over and above winning a PGA Tour event. No, I said John Rahm's uh, leapfrogged him again to the world number one spot, isn't he? So, a bit of to and fro in between those two in that uh, in that respect. Not I'm not overly sure that will motivate him massively to to get back there, but uh, it's, it's certainly it's certainly on the table. Should he should he win again? I guess. I'm a bit cheesed off. I only got thirty to one for this price, but I'm on. My next selection is Bubba Watson. And it's interesting with Bubba. He was second for tee to green and fifth for approach, fourth for off the tee, last time out of the Rocket Mortgage where he finished sixth. And if you just, you know, you know the, we were talking about Kenny Perry. Well, Phoenix, well, tick for Bubba. Um, you look at Muirfield Village. Bubba's got a third and a fifth at Muirfield Village. There's a lot of crossover of courses that Bubba's played well, Kenny Perry's played well at, DeChambeau plays well at, even Morikawa. So, 
he's hitting the ball, driving the ball as well. You know, he's going back to peak Bubba. I mean, I'm seeing here, strokes gained off the tee. Since going back to the Valspar in May, he hasn't been outside the top 20 for strokes gained off the tee. He's just hitting the ball beautifully. And all of a sudden, at the Rocket Mortgage, those um, approach, those approaches with the irons and the wedges just clicked. He gained 5.3 strokes across the week at the Rocket Mortgage. And... The Achilles heel, the putting. Well, he's actually been putting positively the last two outings. In fact, you can go back to also Wells Fargo and Valspar, where he was actually 2.7 and 2.5 strokes gained putting positive. So all of a sudden, he's actually making some putts and feeling a lot more confident with the flat stick. Add to the mix with Bubba, he's currently 56 in the world. You need to be top 50 to play in the WGC in a fortnight. So at the moment, he's outside that cutoff. Lucas Herbert's in, by the way. Sergio Garcia's in for the uh, Memphis event, WGC. If Bubba doesn't get into the world's top 50 this week, he will miss his first WGC Bridgestone, as it was, event since 2010. He's played in 11 consecutive events in that WGC. So the old Bridgestone that's now St. Jude. I, I don't know. You can just see with Bubba, things are peaking. He 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 seems to be caring more. And he, let's be frank, he's he's getting into the mix a lot more. I know that he, I was on him at fifty five to one when he was um, in the mix at the Wells Fargo Championship and went was it triple double on the last two? Yeah, yeah, to, yeah. And then of course the the worst of them all. And we have said now that you know it is possible to do a Bubba on the back nine on a Sunday. The worst one, of course, was Travellers, where everyone, the world and his wife was on him. He was trading odds on, coming down the 14th when he was leading. And he went, was it bogey? Oh, he's here. Bogey, 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 double bogey, bogey. To finish. He finished 19th <laughs> after leading, coming down the 14th. But at the end of the day, do, do we foresee that Bubba Watson, for the rest of his career, is going to be you know, doing this kind of stuff? And he'll get his head around it at some point. And it could well be this week at the 3M Open when he's getting chased down by a Richie Warinsky or a Chase Seaver or someone as random as Robbie Shelton. Who knows? But a good player like Watson, if he keeps getting in the mix, he's going to convert at some point. He's going to convert a very good each-way place or a win. You know, bearing in mind this guy's won plenty of PJ Tour tournaments. Um, so, yeah, I'm in. Unfortunately, 30-1, to 1, but I'll take that eight places with William Hill. You can get him this morning with the same bookmaker, 40, 4 0 to 1, Bubba Watson. Just seems to have the other one, the other one in his ilk would be Sergio, wouldn't it? Sergio fighting to get a Ryder Cup mm. spot. And he often does well, Sergio, in the weeks after majors. Yeah, yeah, there's a few odd sparks with Sergio, isn't there? He did make the odd part or two as well over the, over the open, so. Yeah, he'll have his take. Shot a 66 on Sunday, didn't yeah. he? 66 Sunday, Sergio, to vault up the leaderboard a little bit. So, yeah, Sergio and Watson were the ones. It'd be interesting to see how Bobby McIntyre goes this week as well. Yep. Making a kind of... He's starting to play a lot more PJ Tour of golf. He's got that... Uh, he, he got into the world's top 50, didn't he, with that finish at the Scottish at um, the Open. Yeah. So he has qualified for the WGC because of that in yeah. two weeks' time. As has, and I would have thought Lucas Herbert might be um, getting a bit of interest this week because he's been playing some fantastic golf as well. He plays the three M Open. So yeah, at the top, I am going Watson and Dustin Johnson. I'm also throwing in there at eighty to one. We've we've seen it in the past with Wolf. Uh, we saw it with Morikawa here, young, youngish talents that. We don't really know how far they can go. But this guy, when you actually look into his history, this Mito Perea is some kind of player. Since he turned pro in 2015, he has won four times, three of those being on the Corn Ferry Tour. Now, the way it worked is that they've effectively elongated the Corn Ferry Tour. So rather than it being just last year and no one could graduate, they're now calling it a two-year um, schedule. But if you won three times within that period, you instantaneously got promoted to the PGA Tour. And that's what he did. 
So he won he won twice this year. He won once in 2020, and then he's won twice in back to back weeks in 2021. The Rex Hospital Open and the BMW Charity Pro Am. And as soon as he won the second of those titles, promoted to the PGA Tour. And so far, he's missed the cut of the Rocket Mortgage Classic. He was 34th at the John Deere Classic. And then last week, 5th at the Barbasol Championship. Last week, he was 2nd for strokes gained off the tee and 4th for strokes gained tee to green. Um, he's Wacky Neiman, Wacky Neiman's housemate down in um, Jupiter, Florida. Um, he's, he's older than Wacky, and Wacky actually said in an interview at the Rocket Mortgage that he's, he always used to look up to Mito because Mito, in his words, was a better player. I don't know if he was saying that tongue in cheek, but also Mito was sort of two to three years his senior. So seeing what Mito was doing across junior golf and in, in you know lower levels of pro golf was inspiring for Wacky. They're very close. Um, I've got him at eighty to one this week, Mito Pereira. Um, if he keeps that tee to green game going around here and just finds some neutrality or slightly better than neutrality putting, I could see Mito being towards the top end of the leaderboard. You can get one hundred to one with Unibet right now, six places each way. I'm on board eighty to one, eight places each way with William Hill on Mito Pereira. One to keep an eye on. What about you two? Yeah, I've I've backed uh, backed a couple of longer prices. Um, James Hahn, I backed um, after last week's effort. Uh, Eight miscuts on the trot, didn't he, before that, and then finished fifth. But it does well, blow he, a bit hot. He, 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 he normally he normally misses twelve cuts and wins. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. yeah I'm surprised he didn't win. To be fair, but he does blow yeah. a bit hot and cold, doesn't he? I mean, if you went through a spell last year, ninth, sixth, fifth, and three consecutive events, so he can string a few together when he finds a bit of form. Tenth in Phoenix early this year, fifteenth for the Genesis, and he had a shot fifty nine last week. And I, I, I do like. I mean, he didn't finish it off, and uh, the following round we shot seventy, I think, in the final round to finish in a tie for fifth. Um, but a player that's been showing some very, very low scoring ability coming to a track like this that's going to be set up for birdies um, works for me. So, so Hans in, um, 125 to 1 with 8 places. You can get a bit more if you fancy 5 inch, five inch way, but uh, I'm, uh, I'm listening to Barry nowadays. Um, and the other one is uh, Kevin Tway, who I know you've given up on um, after backing him for a couple of weeks. So I thought I'd. Uh... Well, he's short of he's short of finishing the top eight. Exactly. So that's, that was I'm off. that was entirely my logic. So two hundred to one. Um, and he's <laughs> he, actually to be fair, Steve, he has been playing some fairly consistent stuff. Fourteenth, twenty third, twenty sixth shot. Uh, shot well, he closed with a twenty uh, a sixty four at the John Deere. A couple of sixty sevens to finish last week. It's. Uh, uh, the Barbasol is, is playing some decent stuff. So 200 to 1 I thought was a decent enough price. I've backed one of your other ones, but I'll save all the commentary for you because you'll do a far better job than me on that. Any uh, last eight weeks, strokes gained current form. Tway is 20th, tied with Doug Gim. So yeah, he's been playing some very nice stuff. I mean, again, he's another pro, isn't he? He's, he's, he's deeply in the doo-doo, Kevin Tway. He's just deeply in it. You know, it's Corn Ferry Tour, here we come, unless you do something, Kevin. And slowly but surely, he's been eking out some half-decent places. He's still 181st, though, in the FedEx Cup. So his first target is 150 in partial status, isn't it? So, yeah, he needs to do it. I also think, you know, um, Benny Ann's going to do something this week. I'm not on him. So if you were listening, get on him. 160 to 150 to 1 with 8 places, Benny Ann. Now, he, again, is in deep, deep doo-doo. 165th in the FedEx Cup standings. Will he want to play Corn Ferry Golf or European Tour Golf again? I doubt it. No. Needs to produce. Needs to produce something. Yeah, it's getting to that point in the year, isn't it? You got some bombs, Barry? Uh, what have I got? I'm going to go give Maverick McNeely a run this week. <laughs> He's had a 30th, 21st, 18th, uh, his last three tournaments, had a week off to rest up and uh, yeah, give it a run here for the first time at, uh, this week. So 40 to 1, give that a go. And I've taken a super long shot, um, 
just for fun. So Fabian Gomez, he missed the cut last week, uh, just a poor second round, but had a 14th two weeks ago, and he finished 13th here a couple of years ago. So uh, he's up over 300 to 1. So, yeah, nothing nothing too intense this week. I kind of dial it back on the bets a little bit after the Open. Um, and go and super, see. Fa- super Fab Gomez. 350 to 1. I thought you were going to back Troy Merritt. I did. I did. Um, I, I thought. I thought you. I thought I'd sold him to you. You fool. You had. <laughs> you yeah, had I know. You absolute fool. I backed. You know what? I did. I backed Troy Merritt. He, you made a lot of sense, and he, he'd be the kind of guy I would never back. I'd never pick. I just. I don't know. Uh, why would you? Why would you never pa- back Troy Merritt? Because he's the kind of guy that would annoy. <laughs> I don't know. He's the kind of guy I'd look at and go, I probably should back him, but I don't feel any kind of like longing or desire to back him I, d- I cannot put a i cannot put a finger on it and he'd be going well and i'd be kicking myself for not backing him so uh mm. i just blind followed you this week i don't have much more to say about it like that it's probably just to save the mental anguish what price did you get on troy with paddy pound uh, sorry for putting you on the spot i got 80 to one that's not bad I got ninety to one with Coral, eight places. Troy Merritt, oh, that's good. Twenty fifteen Quicken Loans National winner at eighteen under par. Twenty eighteen Barbasol Championship winner at Keen Trace, twenty three under par. Both bent grass green. So far this year, eighth at Copperhead, seventh at TPC Craig Ranch, which, as you remember, KH Lee won at some crazy like twenty six under par. Seventh at Colonial, remember that link with Kenny Perry and DeChambeau and the likes. Second at Detroit. Again, we relate Detroit to here. That was the one where Cam Davis beat him in a playoff. He's missed the cut twice since then. Couldn't care less. Terrible record at the John Deere Classic. I don't think anyone really thought Troy Merritt would do very well at an Open Championship, and he didn't. But give him a soft golf course. Give him bent grass greens. Give him a tournament where 20 under pars getting him in the each way spots. I think Troy Merritt is a huge danger this week. Um, he was seventh here in 2019, where he shot seven under 64 and five under 66 across Friday and Saturday. And he started the final round just two shots behind eventual winner Matthew Wolfe. I think he went out in the fourth last group. So Troy Merrick for me, yeah. He's just that sort, isn't he? Bent grass greens, a low total, soft golf course, a great putter. Also... Two second place finishes at the Barracuda Championship, which, as we know, Colin Morikawa won a few years ago, and we know Morikawa was also second here two years ago. So there's a lot. Oh, there's also a third at Bay Hill from Merritt in 2016. So there's a lot of crossover there. TPC River Highlands and Colonial top tens, Detroit second. I just like the way that the play courses Merritt has played well at correlate very well with what we've seen here from previous winners. So Merritt at 90 to 1. And also, I've gone for a player that I rarely back. When I do back, he misses the cut. But to be fair, that's most of my selections. But I know that Paul always keeps a very close close eye on this guy. Sam Ryder. And I will say with Sam Ryder, when he clicks, he does get some very high-end results, doesn't he, Sam Ryder? I mean, last week, was he second or third? Yep. Yeah, third, yeah. I know it was from off the pace, but basically he saved his PGA to a skin last week. Third at the Barbasol. He now finds himself scanning up the FedEx Cup rankings in front of me. He was 132nd before the Barbasol, so he was outside the 125 bubble. He's now 111th, so he's safe. Yeah, Ryder knows he's got full playing privileges for next season. So it will go one of two ways with Sam Ryder. He'll either miss the cut by 12 shots after probably dining out on a rather nice check from last week, or he could keep that momentum going. And if you just look at Ryder, he has got some fantastic results. Second at John Deere Classic. He was third at the Shriners Open in 2018. Second at John Deere Classic in 2018. He just goes well on low-scoring golf courses. He was also seventh at Muirfield Village last year at the Workday Charity Open. Love that. 
Um, eighth at the Honda Classic this year, when I think he might have been the 54-hole leader rider. He was right up there. Um, of course, we see Michael Thompson is a winner at the Honda Classic. There's those Florida overtures, blah, 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 blah. And again, third next week. When he does get to the top of leaderboards, rider, he can hang around. And he's the, he's the kind of player that you would look at him. A bit Wyndham Clark-ish, but actually he's got better results than Wyndham Clark has had some quite close calls to getting his maiden PGA to a victory. I think this course will really suit him if he's focused. So I got on board. I think he's very, very bent grass positive with his putting as well. Yeah. So I'm on him eight places each way, 125 to one with Coral, Sam Ryder. Uh, yeah, bent grass, Sam Ryder is absolutely his service, uh, surface rather. Um he got, gained 11 strokes approach last week, 12 strokes tee to green. That's some really impressive stats. And then you're taking to a track that he is his best surface. I think it's, I think, I think it's a great pick at that price. Um, and as you say, it'll, it'll, it'll either go one or two ways. It'll either take his foot right off the throttle or it'll, uh, it'll just release him because the pressure's off and uh, he can go and express himself. And, yeah, uh, and that go, and get, go, and earn, yeah. go and earn yourself a fortune, yeah. Sam, this week, Absolutely. or maybe even get a win. Yeah, and that yeah. price, should, uh, so you should be willing to take take a chance on it. I think. Yeah, one twenty five to one. Then rider for me, merit at nineties. I've got Mito Pereira at eighty to one, Bubba Watson at thirty to one. You can take him at forties right now at William Hill, and Dustin Johnson fifteen to two favorite. Right, that's enough of that. Unless you've got anything else to add. Let's talk Kazoo Open. So the European Tour moves to Wales this week for the Kazoo Open. Over to yeah, you. Yeah, indeed. Um, yeah, quickly before I, I'd say that, I just wanted to um, say congratulations to our major championship um, competition winners um, that we ran across Facebook and Twitter, um, starting from the Masters this year and uh, and finished at the Open Championship. Our winner was Alan Blackett, who um, he won the top prize, hundred and fifty pound, with his Cameron Smith, Patrick Cantlay. John Rahm and Jordan Spieth selections across the four majors, respectively. So very well done, Alan. Congratulations. Nice yeah. yeah, really good stuff. Um, Tom, our resident West Brom fan, he won £75 in second place. And Russell Tyndale won £25 for finishing third. So well done to our three winners. And uh, everyone else who took part, there's, there's nearly 400 people who... Took part this year, so um, thanks to everyone who had a play in our competition, and of course Bet Three Six Five who sponsored the competition for us this year. Um, keep, keep your ear to the ground. I'm sure we'll probably try and do the same in 2022. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Usually around Christmas time, once we get it all confirmed, and then we can uh, you can start thinking about the majors at that point. Um, but yes, because it'll open. I'll try and wrap this up in ten or fifteen minutes um, before everyone falls asleep. Um, Kazoo Open, um, supported by Gareth Bale, who's, uh, who loves his golf, Gareth, doesn't he? Um, it's great to see the Celtic Manor track back on the schedule again. I, you know, it stepped up to the mark last year, didn't it, for the Celtic Classic and the Wales Open, um, in, in short order when, uh, when they were trying to piece together a, a European tour schedule and it's stuck this year, which is really good. Um, it's the Kazoo Open this time rather than the Wales Open, so, uh, that's, uh, fresh online car retailer that's been splashing some cash in its marketing all over the shop with various events and uh well they sponsor aston villa and um uh, are they sponsoring this cricket hundred as well i think there's uh there's, there's whenever you go on the motorway now over here all you ever see are kazoo trucks yeah yeah they're, so they're clearly flogging a lot of motors they are they're, they're doing extremely well and they're sponsoring the kazoo open this week um to their credit as well um Field quality did take a bit of a hit because Bob McIntyre's decided to fly over to, to the 3M Open for Steve's event. So he would have been um, favourite or very close to favourite for this event. Um, him out of the mix has left Matt Wallace as the 9-1 to favourite. Sam Horsfield, who won the first of those two events I just mentioned last year, 14-1. to Justin Harding, 16s. Aaron Rice, 16s. Laurie Cantor, 22. Jordan Smith, Adrian Otegi, 25s. Matthew Jordan, Callum Hill, thirty-three to one, thirty-five to one. Bar those players, a relatively low-key event. Seven places each way. A few of the odds is the best you'll get from the likes of Boyles and Paddy and Betfair and Coral this week. Um, no one's gone eight each way. 
uh, that I've seen at least. Celtic Manor, 2010 course is where we're playing. 7,393 yard past 71. It's an exposed track. It's a fusion of the old Wentford Hills track um, combined with nine new holes that were put together back in 2007 to get it Ryder Cup ready. Uh, slightly strange setup, five par threes and four par fives that make the par of 71 um, bent power mix on the greens. And historically, it's been a good approach game that's really been key. High greens in regulation, strong strokes gained approach. Um, and it's relatively easy to putt on. The, the greens aren't the most taxing out there for the players who aren't quite as good with the flat stick. Um, a few historical results to give us a flavour then. 2010, Graham McDowell won at 22s. He was 15 under par. 2011 was Alex Noren at 66 to 1, 9 under. 2012, Tong Chai Jai D, 125 to 1, he was 6 under. 2013 was Gregory Bordy, 40 to 1, 8 under. Yost Lauten won in 2014 at 14 to 1, at 14 under. And then there was a break until last year when Sam Horsfield won. The first of the two events, the Celtic Classic at 28 to 1 with an 18 under total. And then the following week, the Wales Open, Roman Langask won at 66 to 1 with an 8 under total. So you saw the difference between the two events there, 18 under to 8 under in the space of a week. And that was just down to the windier conditions the following week. Slightly tougher setup and um, it does make a difference. And you know, historically, just reading through those numbers, 15 under... Uh, all the way down to six under when we used to play it as the Wales Open. So it's not a track that gets super, super low unless the conditions are really uh, soft and really favourable. Um, it tends to be a reasonable test and it tends to be a test from tee to green. Uh, Langask was fourth for strokes gain off the tee. Horsefield was third for strokes gain approach and second for strokes gain tee to green. Both of them put re putted reasonably well and well enough to win at least eighth and thirteenth respectively so get your approach play sorted they're, they're quite wide fairways so um second shot course effectively um make sure your, your irons are dialed in make a few of the putts on the relatively straightforward greens and uh, and bobs your uncle uh, the weather's quite interesting this week actually because it's gonna be a bit of a mixed bag thursday it'll be around about 28 degrees and sunny with relatively light winds windy um, on Friday, it's 15 mile an hour on average, so it could be gusting 20, 25. Um, and then Saturday, it's going to rain all day, 12 mile an hour winds. Um, Sunday, mixed showers and sunshine and back down to kind of 8, 10 miles an hour. So I suspect it could be really quite scorable on Thursday. Uh, Friday will be quite tough in the wind. Saturday is going to be not very pleasant in the rain. And then Sunday, it should be, should be soft. Um, calm and scorable again so you're going to have two two good scoring days and two grinding days so a bit of a mix um, and I think that kind of lends itself to a certain type of player a player who can get out of the blocks quite quickly um, and then uh, can, can grind or hang about when it's not quite so quite so easy and uh, and then potentially stick a decent score together on the um, uh, on the Sunday, I think maybe 13, 14 under might be the right kind of number this year because I think they will go relatively low on a couple of the days, but um, we shall see. So, uh, yeah, it's a, a, a player is adaptable enough really to to be able to handle those very variable conditions over the course of the four days. And um, boiling it all down, I've backed four this week. The first one I've backed is Daniel Van Tonder. Um, there was a bit of early 50 to 1 available yesterday. He's been tipped in a few places. 35 to 1 is the current price. He impressed me last week in his open debut. Seventh to halfway. Um, ended up 40th. Um, couldn't quite keep it going over the weekend. But really enjoyed his his, his four days by, by all accounts. Um, he was also 44th at the US PGA a few months before in his major debut. From there he was 4th for greens and regulation. 2nd for strokes gained tee to green. So... His long game is really good in that uh, that respect, and that's ideal uh, for this week's task. And similar metrics for when he won in Kenya in March as well. He was he was really good from tee to green. Combine that with the fact that he's got seven shot sunshine tour wins, so he's got that winning mentality. And um, his debut here is no particular issue to me. It was debut and um, performances for both Horsfield and Langask when they won last year. 
Um, and if we need someone who's quick out of the traps, he has recorded five first round leader positions from his last 27 starts globally. So just over one in five of his um, recent starts have ended up with him being the first round leader. So we want someone quick out of the traps and then someone who's got the winning mentality on a Sunday, boil it all down, put it all together. Daniel Van Tonder, I thought was a cracking price um, to put up as my headline. Um, I've also backed Richie Ramsey, 35 to 1 also currently. Um, he was the guy who lent his caddy to Marcel CM last week in the Open. And uh, that partnership threatened to go really well as, as CM was really outperformed his expectations and his price last week. And uh, couldn't quite keep it all going on the Sunday, but uh, a, a good performance for him. And um, that will buoy Richie's caddy, who's back on the bag presumably this week. And um, perhaps they can pick up where they left off before he uh, went off on his uh, Kent adventures. Um, fourth at the Irish Open for Richie before that, 15th at the Scottish Open. And it's been the putting with Richie. I think, I think I mentioned it on a podcast a week or two back. It's his putting that's really been getting catching my eye late. 11th and 2nd for strokes game putting in Ireland and Scotland. Um, and that's because, well, generally, it's his long game that's his strength. So when you see that kind of spark with a player like Ramsey, that's something that's more than noteworthy. Um, scoring well recently, lots of 65 on his, 65s on his record, um, keeps popping in low rounds. He was 10th here in 2009 um, when he led going into the weekend. So he's got a little bit of previous on the track and some good incoming form to back that up. Um, they're the two relatively short prices. I've also backed David Law at 125 to 1. He was an eye catcher for me in Scotland. He was eighth going into Sunday at that Rolex level, that much higher level um, event than we've got this week. Closed with a 72, but he took loads of positives out of it. He was talking about the positives on social media. And uh, from what I saw, he looked really, really good. Um, he was 37th here in Wales, um, back in his debut at this track last year. Um, on the tougher of the two events, he was 10th for strokes gained approach, 14th for strokes gained tee to green, despite finishing down the field. So um, got the measure of the track from tee to green. This should be a little bit easier this week, so um, I think you'll quite enjoy that. Uh, seventh recently, the Porsche European Open. And that was his first top 10, 10 finish since winning the Vic Open back in 2019. Um, second after day one that week. And he's got a couple of uh, first round leader finishes since lockdown too. So he's another one of these guys who can start really quite quickly. And uh, if I'm right, I mean, I've, I've kind of taken this narrative um, with a few of the players. If I'm right, that you're going to need to get out of the blocks quick, put a, a decent six, seven, eight under total on the board. And then um, you know, kind of bide your time until Sunday. Then players who can get themselves in a position after the first eighteen could be a, could be a good strategy, I think. Um, final guy I've backed is Niall Kearney, um, two hundred to one, still two hundred one, two hundred to one being dangled out there by Bet three six five at the moment. Um, and perhaps he can take some inspiration from Seamus's win last week and get his first Euro title, European Tour title in the bag this week. Um, stepped up from the Euro Pro, Pro Tour um, over the last year or so. He's got a partial status in the European Tour, courtesy of his uh, Q score finish. But he's starting to put some decent uh, efforts together. 30th in the Golf in Dubai Championship last year, 21st in Grand Canaria. 4th in Tenerife is his best effort. He shot a 61 to close that week and um, fl flirted with a 59 at a point during that round as well. Um, led going into the weekend in Germany recently, finished 12th in the end, but he was 4th for strokes gained approach and 7th for strokes gained tee to green. And again, this is his Celtic, um, it's in a Celtic manner debut, but there's plenty of success from him on the other side of the Irish Sea. He's got a couple of those Irish PGA championships to his name over the years, one of which he won by a massive 14 strokes going back a few years ago. So he's, he's a capable lad. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a bit of disparity with his price out there at the moment, but uh, I'm quite happy to take the 200 to one that's been dangled out there by 365. So um, I'll take a chance on that. So just to recap then, Niall Kearney, 200 to one, David Law, 125s, Richie Ramsey, 35s, and Daniel Van Tonder, um, best price you'll get at the moment is 35 to one. Any fancies from you guys? Paul, I'm not I'm like uh, in the tradition of this podcast. I will not correct your, correct your pronunciation of uh, Carney. Carney, <laughs> so, uh, just uh, yeah. 
And listen, just to give you a nice big up here, you've rocked the market. Bet three six five have dropped into one hundred and twenty five to one. Have they? Yeah, there so may, may, maybe the uh, me following you in with that uh, couple of euro each way uh, <laughs> completely blew their uh, model. It's pushed them over the edge. I, yeah, 125 still. Uh, given that he's he's been chalked up at 66s and 80s with some other firms, I think that's still a, a still a, a yeah a, a good price for a player who's been putting himself in the mix recently. Just it, it, he's only going to take positives from Seamus's result last yeah, week as well, so. isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, why? Not? I mean, like, look, I, how can you resist? Uh, I like the extra places, but you know, it was two hundred to one, uh, so I, I hopped on board. Um, also, back to Danny Van Tonder as well. Um, outside of that, I'm just following you. I seem to just tank when it comes to the European Tour events. I'm a little bit, I don't know, out of sync when it gets to out of sync with it. I don't seem to match up. Um, I could, <laughs> so I'm following Paul. That's it. Blind faith. Let's go. No pressure then, Barry. Pressure's for tyres, Paul. <laughs> you, you you look out for Sam Ryder, Paul. I, I always look out for DV2. Mm. I think he's an exceptional player. He's seventh at halfway at the Open. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really good. We're, we're all on DVT, unfortunately. No, no. I, th- what, what, I think it's great. What could possibly but... go wrong? I th- you know, I, 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 it, it wasn't my shortest price, but I put him up top because I think he's the best bet of the week. So, um, so yes. And he, as I say, he's been he's been tipped up um, in a few other places I've seen last night and this morning as well, and for, and for quite right reasons as well. He's got so uh, he's got a chance that he's better than the price that was being chalked up for him. So, uh, so yeah. No, I think uh, well. It could be the week, chaps, where we all uh, we all nail the same winner. One of these weeks it has to happen that we're all on the same winner. Yeah. I mean, you guys are idiots. You didn't follow me on Seamus last week, but you know yeah. that's, not, that's not my fault. I can't. Pri- I can't price proud, your... bro. Price proud, too, yeah. Too price proud. <laughs> I think that's us, isn't it? We're done. It is indeed. So yeah, no, we're not no pod next week. You say, Steve? No pod next week. We're not covering the Olympics. Um, I'm away on holiday. We're still debating whether we do a pod the week after that as well. It is a WGC, so we'll see what we can pull together for that. But um, thank you for listening. It's been fantastic. I hope your bets go well, gentlemen. Yeah, you too. Best of luck, everyone. Good luck, everybody. And, uh, yeah, best of luck to listeners. We'll be back soon. So uh, enjoy your golf betting. Goodbye. If you like betting on golf But everyone that you back misses the car Get some experts involved With all the stats and the tips And so much more Cause it's the golf betting system The golf betting system is the 